Yo, I'm Brendan. Anyone can become a millionaire. And I know that's true because I did it. I'm just a farm kid with a short attention span. So if I can become a millionaire, so can you. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the 10 tips that outline exactly what I did in my life and my finances to go from a $0 net worth right out of college to now being a millionaire in my mid thirties. Part one of what I'm sharing are five ways to add so much value that you have to get a raise. And then the next part is part two, and that's five tips on how to exponentially grow your wealth. So first we gotta earn it, then we gotta grow it. This little scoundrel is me at four years old, furiously pedaling on my bike around our dairy farm. At that age, I was a lot like Ricky Bobby. All I wanted to do was go fast. And frankly, not a lot has changed, except now I'm a millionaire and I still wanna go fast. But I got off to a rocky financial start even in my 20s, because in general, I'd rather be doing fun things, like when I was a kid, riding my bike as fast as possible to keep up with my older cousins and my sister, versus doing responsible things, like my homework or working hard at my first few jobs. Part one, let's earn it. The first tip is learn to work really hard. When you're riding a bike, like when I was a kid here, you've got to pedal as hard as you can. And what you need to do is that same exact thing in your job. Figure out what adds the most value to your position and then figure out what the next position is and just start doing that. As much as you can, as reasonably and responsibly as you can, start doing the next job above yours and add a tremendous amount of value. Nobody does this. Everybody does the bare minimum. They do what they're supposed to do. And so if you actually do this, you're gonna stand out. Tip number two is be curious about how money works and explore it like a kid. You know when you're a kid and you get like your first bike or you get your first little bit of freedom to go explore the neighborhood, what do you do? You go take advantage of that. Like you go poke around every corner, you literally turn over every rock, like you're all over the place. Do that when it comes to finances, do that when it comes to your job, your company, what it means for you to be someone who understands what has to happen in a big picture sense so that you can add the most value there. And in your personal finances, if you're watching videos like this, you're gonna learn more and be more familiar with terms so that you know what to do. Yeah, it's not gonna be an overnight thing unless you take my online class and it's like a four hour span of zero to everything you need to know. So that's very handy. But in general, it'll probably take you a year or two of studying, reading books, understanding everything, and just exploring. If you're interested in an area, go explore that some more. But you have to be curious and you have to go satisfy that curiosity and learn how money really works. Tip number three, don't wait for someone to teach you, unless it's me with my investing class, because I will literally teach you. But in general, there's no one coming to save us when it comes to our money, when it comes to adding more value at work and getting a raise, getting a promotion, getting that next level up of job that's gonna afford you the amount of money that you need to grow your wealth, it's on us. So we have to take accountability for our own growth and our own actions. Number four is settle in, at least eventually. Get into a rhythm. Like when you're pedaling a bike and you're going really fast and you're able to maintain that for a while, that's a rhythm. So what we have to do is get into a rhythm and commit to growing in an industry, commit to getting a degree, commit to a company. A lot of us like millennials and Gen Z adults, we're moving around so frequently and our attention spans are so short that we can't build up a critical mass of experience in an industry or in a position. And so we keep jumping around to more and more basically entry level jobs and it's not helping us. Number five is the most difficult one of all of this whole section and that's accept feedback. The way that we all learn and grow the fastest is by making mistakes. So if we're learning to ride a bike, we make a mistake, it's pretty obvious because you end up injured. You're leaning over a sink while your mom pours hydrogen peroxide on your bloody knee and you're screaming and everything's crazy, but the bubbles are kind of cool. It's pretty obvious you're getting that feedback loop. I did something wrong on the bike. Now I'm feeling pain. I need to do something different next time. But the challenging thing is that the rest of life is a lot less obvious. We don't see right away when we make a mistake. It might be years down the road. We don't see when we've taken kind of a wrong turn and you're going, eh, it's okay if I do buy now, pay later. Eh, it's okay if I use this credit card a lot. Eh, it's okay if I get a line of credit out of my house. Eh, it's okay if I lease this car. And then before you know it, your finances are in shambles because you've made a bunch of subpar decisions that have led you down this bad road. The key to course correcting sooner than that is accepting feedback from other people that we trust, that we have reason to believe. And what that does is it shortens the timeline of our learning curve and it allows us to change course faster. But you have to decide one thing before anybody gives you any kind of feedback or advice. And that's that you will accept it. You will hear it out, take it to heart and really consider it. All right, part two, the really exciting part, five ways to exponentially grow yourself and your money. There's more bike analogies here that are really cheesy, so stick with me, but these are like tactical logistical things you can do with your money to help you grow. So number one, wear a helmet. 
What's the financial equivalent of a helmet? It's an emergency fund. That just means that you need access to capital readily. So if something crazy happens and you've got to have money, you're not relying on a lender. You're not looking for a credit card. You're not looking for a payday loan. You have a level of security to your life that you can cover some emergencies. There's a lot of opinions out there about how much you should have. I say you definitely need at least a thousand bucks. I'd prefer that you have at least one month of living expenses, whatever that looks like for you. So if you generally spend 2,500 bucks a month, I think you should probably have that in cash in a high yield savings account ready to go. All right, enough with that. Number two, avoid the pit. This is a term that we use at our dairy farm for this area that was underground. And back way in the day, they used to store grain in there. And all we knew was it was a scary dark hole. And if you lifted up this big giant square metal lid that was super heavy, you could lift it up and there was almost always scorpions and black widows and all kinds of scary, mysterious things down here in this hole. And we just knew like this was the worst place in the world. You never go in there. It's terrible. The equivalent of that in money terms is typically debt. It's very, very seldom that getting into debt is the best possible decision for you. Yeah, I get it that a house can appreciate and I get it that in certain times it makes sense for people because you need debt to can make, make that next step in life or whatever the thing is. But most of us abuse debt, we're not using it wisely. So avoid the pit. Number three, pace yourself. Just like when you're riding a bike and you're the littlest, youngest one and everybody else is bigger and stronger and faster than you, you've got to pace yourself because if you sprint right away, they're gonna leave you in the dust. So what that means financially is saving up for big predictable purchases in cash, which means that implies that we don't spend all of our energy or our money the first minute that we get it. This is really tough, especially if you come into a windfall or a bonus or something kind of unpredictable happens and you're like, oh yes, finally I can do that fun thing. I can have a vacation, I can do whatever. And if we do that in lieu of like, buying a new roof that we really, really need or having an air conditioner put on that we really, really need, well, we're being fools. So let's not do that. Let's pace ourselves. Number four, lean into the downhill. In terms of our money, investing is the superpower of speed. It accelerates us. So on flat ground, I'd be lucky to hit 18 miles an hour on a bike, but on a downhill, I could kiss 30. Why? Because I had this external force speeding me up. On a bike, that's gravity. It's yanking me downhill. It's propelling me further than I could get on my own. With your money, that external speed adder is investing in compound interest. There's a lot to investing. There's a lot to understand. It can be really, really confusing for people. So go back and look at my older videos or look at my one hour class that I'll link right up here for you. That's kind of a general overview of all of your money and things you need to do and things you need to know about investing so you can get started as soon as possible and get that speed building up as quickly as you can. Tip number five is look up through the curve, through the corner. Now that I've kind of switched from bicycles to motorcycles or sports cars, the first and most valuable thing that I learned about driving from professional driving coaches is to look way further ahead than you're used to. With money and with cars, we typically just look a few feet ahead. We think about what our money's gonna be doing this week. We think maybe about the end of the month, are we gonna be able to pay all the bills, whatever. We need to look way ahead, way down the road. Because what happens both in cars and in our money life is we go where we look. So if you're shopping all the time, you're looking at stuff to buy, you're gonna buy more stuff. If you track your money, if you're watching where your spending is going, you're gonna be spending less. We go where we look. So what we need to do is plan, track, forecast, and be aware. You've got to use some kind of tool to make this easier on you. Use a budget, whether that's paper or an investment tracker like Stock Market Eye, or if you want to, you can use something like Empower, even though they're different than they used to be with personal capital. Something like that puts all of your investments and your money together in one place so you can see it. Like Stock Market Eye puts all of your investments in one place. I personally track my overall net worth, including all my bank accounts and stuff that aren't just invested in a spreadsheet. So anything like that works, you just have to do it. That's the tricky thing. Whatever the tool is, pick a tool and do the work. So what that might look like with you financially and your money is to go, where do I wanna be at the end of the year? Because Christmas is coming. Christmas always decimates us because we spend like $900 and it's crazy and we don't have that money any year. So that means we're digging ourselves out of credit card debt until April of the next year and it's a mess. How do we plan ahead and think about Christmas now? Or can you look two or five years ahead and say, hey, in five years, I'm gonna be 41. My kids are gonna be in elementary school. There's no way we're gonna be spending less money on them. 
So how can I free up some money to be able to cover the cost of us living this way? Can I make more money? Can I spend less money? Do I need to crank down my investment so that I have money to, let's say, save for their college or do other things that are going to come up? Like we've got to be looking further ahead in life to be able to make those plans. If you want to see a crazy example of that in driving, either in motorcycles or in cars, just look up on YouTube target fixation and say target fixation motorcycle or target fixation racetrack or something like that. And it's amazing. You can literally watch as someone is driving their own car. They're not holding a camera. They're holding a steering wheel, but they're driving their own car. And let's say somebody else crashes over here because you kind of can't help but look at that person crashing. Sometimes they literally steer right into the crashed car, even though the track goes somewhere else. It's like, what are you guys doing? But it's this crazy feat of human nature that wherever we look, there we go. So we got to look through the curve into the future, get everything planned out ahead of time and track it all. If you're like me and you think this is all very good and well, but you're not going to remember it and you need some kind of note, then look for a link in the description that says notes here for you, like notes right here, because I'll put all of these notes that I've made this video off of onto a Notion page for you so you can copy and paste them into whatever note taking system you use so that you can go ahead and take action on this stuff. I can never just watch something once and take action on it. I need like 10 repetitions before it really sticks in my mind. I like making these kind of free tools for you guys so you can have this, give you these free notes so you can take it with you and hopefully change your life for the better. If I can become a millionaire, you can become a millionaire. It's so weird to even say that feels like phony somehow, but technically it is true. So if you don't want to pay for a class and you just want to watch an hour of a free miniature class, basically all about your money, investing and how to get all this stuff going, then watch this next. And the secret comment for today is film because I recently become a film camera nerd. This is a Pentax K1000. I just had service. Listen to this chutter. Oh, it's so satisfying. It's like a little baby rifle bolt or something. It's so like mechanical and tactile. If you like the video or you want to be a nerd, then go ahead and leave a comment that says film in it somewhere. And I'll see you next time. Bye.